Okay, I'll put that in the vise. I got the uh, 1032 tap and a tap holder here. Put a little oil on it. And I'll just start this. Trying to look from both sides to make sure that I'm straight up and down. I'm going to move this up so I can see when the tap comes through. back up every once in a while to clear the chips. And it's through. Okay, so there's one. Next hole. Again, holding it and pressing down and trying to keep it straight up and down. Looking in both directions. Make sure I'm parallel with that part. Okay, it's working. Aluminum is soft so it cuts pretty easy, but again it tends to gall sometimes so you got to be careful. That's another good reason for the oil. Okay, and it's through. Clear off some of this mess here and I'll come back and we'll start assembling. Now these really should be done with stainless steel screws and nuts and so forth. Unfortunately I don't have any on hand so I'm going to have to use with use what I've got here. Oops, that nut's not the right size. Tighten this down. Okay, the next thing is a shaft, and I'm going to use a uh, lock washer on this screw so it doesn't back out. Modify this a little bit to get it to fit. Okay, 
I had to do a little filing there to get this to fit around the screws because it's pretty tight fit here. Okay, there's that. And the next thing now are the rods. Short one goes on this side. Screws are a little long for this job, but they'll work. Okay, there's the basic uh, fixture. Now I need to wire up the coupling, which is basically a, a piece of wire that comes over here and wraps around. It's a capacitively fed. So I'll get that and get a piece of. Um, shrink wrap to hold it in place. I'll have to find that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on the uh, the feed wire here, which is going to be a capacitor. First thing I'm going to do is tin the end of this piece of wire. And this is a solid piece of copper. Copper wire I just got out of a piece of uh, like house wiring. Romex. I'm just soldering it or tinning it here so it'll fully coat. I'll put a little in here too. I like to use this big solder gun so I can get it hot quickly and then back away so I don't overheat things too bad. That looks good. Let's go ahead and put the wire in there. Okay, it's solidified there. So there's the wire soldered in place. The next thing I'm going to do is bend it over. And I'm going to kind of match this other one I've got. So you know, it looks like um, that bend happens about 7 eighths of an inch from this metal plate up to where it curves over. I've made this one kind of like that and then it looks like this is about two wraps around and it looks like it wraps from the top down there's one There's two. I may have to unsolder that again because I forgot something. I need a pair of pliers. And what I forgot is I'm going to have to put some heat shrink over this. And I don't know how I'm going to get it on there. Yeah, I'll unsolder it again and thread it through. I'll come back in a minute. Okay, I've got a big piece of uh, heat shrink tubing here to give you an idea. 
and I'm going to cut a small hole in the side of it here where the wire will come through. You would think that'd be pretty easy to get through there, but it's not. There. Let me solder this in here again. Okay, the next thing to do is to um, shrink that heat shrink with a heat gun. Get that. Okay, I got my heat gun here. That's all there is to it. Okay, we'll go hook it up to the analyzer and see what it looks like. Um, you can do some minor tuning with this by moving this up and down a little bit. You can slide it up and down or bend this wire a little bit. So we'll see how that works out. Okay, I'm ready to hook this up to the analyzer. I've played with it a little bit. So the coax just plugs in here. And this little metal part at the bottom, you could just use some uh, hose clamps or any other kind of clamp to clamp it onto a pole. Okay, I'm just going to hold this up in the air. I'll turn this on. I'll try to give you a close-up of that here in a second. Let it turn on, get it to the right frequency. And the only thing that works on this is the SWR, not the, uh, the resistance. Let me see if I can zoom in there a little bit for you. Oops, you still can't see the meter. So this is the meter that we're looking at. And we want to go down to about 140. It's about 1.7. We're going up to 150. There's 145. It's about 1.6. Still going down. And it dips maybe about 1.55 and up to 100. And 450, 450 megahertz is about 1.7 again. So it dips about in the middle of the, of the band that we're going to use. Looks like the highest it gets is about 1.7, which is okay. You want it under 2 to 1. It'd be nicer if it was lower, but that's good enough for what we're doing. 
Okay, so it's complete. It may not be the prettiest, but it works. The other thing I need to do is put, um, it's a little bit hard to see, put some sealant in here, some silicone or something to seal this up for water. Other than that, it's done. Okay. Again, thanks for watching. 73 from N6 TWW, November 6 Tango Whiskey Whiskey.